your firm has investments in some industries hard hit by the COVID-19 virus. I'm thinking of airlines, for example, I'm thinking of resorts, <coughs> fast food, some energy. How badly are those investments struggling right now? And what have you had to do to bolster them, buttress them, if you will? We have a watch list and only 5% of our portfolio is on that watch list. And of that 5%, we think that many of those companies uh, are, are going to be fine. And so, yes, yeah, certainly uh, we have a little bit of energy and a little bit of retail, but um, we're in very good shape. And we're now able to do what we've done in past uh, recessions, past crises, and be very agile and nimble and shift to buying uh, good companies with bad balance sheets. Uh, the financing markets today for alternatives, even though the high yield market may be open, um, the bank markets are not very open and the availability of financing to do more traditional buyouts is closed. So most of the industry is really working on a portfolio that's in much worse shape. And also they're not able to do what they do, which is traditional buyouts. In our case, a third of what we've done over the years is this buying good companies, uh, buying the, the senior secured debt at the top of the, of the capital structure, and then going through the restructuring process. And we're playing about 95% offense, Eric. And so you know, this is our time. You know, This is when uh, our investors expect us to be a safe pair of hands and to be able to be agile and nimble and weave through uh, crises like this. And this is where we've outperformed and I feel very proud of our team and I think we continue to do that. What do you mean, expand if you will, on this is our time? So the playbook, first of all, is to take care of your people, but then you know, once you do that and you take care of the environment in which you're operating, um, you go <clears throat> into um, really acquiring uh, senior secured debt, acquiring debt uh, across, you know, of companies or lending to companies that are in need and um, making, and, and at the same time, looking for those risk return opportunities that are uh, creating superior risk return for your clients. And we've done that cycle after cycle. We've, we've been in business 30 years. This is our 30th year anniversary. And in every cycle we've outperformed we were probably the second most active or the most active buyer um, in the financial crisis. Uh, and, and we're doing the same here. What kinds of returns, Josh, do you think <clears throat> you'll be able to generate with the investments that you've made since this crisis began? We're in essence helping companies or lending to companies or buying securities that might uh, be you know, single A, double A, uh, even triple B, all the way down to um, securities that are, are sort of more equity-based, uh, distressed securities. And I would say that, um, you know, in, 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 in sort of the higher credit quality asset classes, the investment grade securities, um, you know, we're able to uh, generate, uh, you know, 50 basis points to three or 400 basis points of excess return, depending on the um, situation. In terms of the more opportunistic stuff, um, if um, we're, we're much more focused on absolute return and we have funds that are generating, you know, between, you know, over 15 and even uh, over 20% if you go into our private equity funds where we're in essence buying uh, debt, but we're going to convert that to equity securities. People still marvel at the $10 billion that Apollo made on Lionel Bissell after the financial crisis. It's been described as one of the ballsiest trades ever. It certainly was one of the most profitable trades ever, more than 5x. Is there another Lionel Bissell lurking out there, or is this crisis kind of different from that crisis? But the massive speed of the government response has so far, and you know we're still in the middle of this, um, you know, not created the the gap down that existed in the financial crisis, and and so it'll depend on what happens with the pandemic. It'll depend on, you know, the action of the Federal Reserve and the federal government in terms of fiscal stimu stimulus. It'll depend on what happens between U.S. and China and the economy. And so, 
Um, we're busy at work. Uh, you know, whether there's an, it, whether there's another lion del Bazel uh, remains to be seen. <laughs> uh, Apollo grew approximately six X, right? Some $270 billion in assets under management from the end of 2009 to the end of 2019. Does it grow by six X again over the next 10 years? We think that it's going to double over the next five years and then probably double again. 